Hello and welcome to the next session on calculation of incentive fee and performance fee using hurdle rate and high watermark uh, in an Excel sheet. So in this example, we are going to see how you can uh, calculate incentive fee in an Excel uh, incorporating uh, some of the earlier discussed uh, techniques such as hurdle rate and high watermark. So just to recap, hurdle rate is the, high, uh, is the very minimum rate of return which investors expect uh, in order uh, to calculate incentive fee before any incentive fee is paid to the investment manager, that is hurdle rate. And high watermark is the highest uh, level of uh, NAV on which the incentive fee has been paid in the past, that is high watermark. Incorporating these two concepts, we can calculate incentive fee using uh, an example in Excel. So I'm going to share the Excel sheet and discuss the example. So as you can see, uh, in, in this type performance fee, there are data given for 12 months because typically incentive fees are calculated on monthly basis and applied on GAV, which is gross uh, NAV. And uh, after adjusting performance fee, we, we get the NAV, which is reporting to uh, investment manager, client, investors, etc. So when we have monthly PL for the NAV, we can see what is the cumulative profit for the entire year. So for the month of say January, uh, the first month itself, performance fee is calculated at the rate 20% and uh, accrued for that particular month. So if the profit is 5,000, incentive fee is 20% of that and performance fee for the month is 1,000. However, in the next month, we see the profit is 4,000, increasing overall uh, p &L for the entire year as of February. So we accrue overall 1800 performance fee. So in the column F, performance fee monthly, we only adjust the monthly number on the prior incentive fee, which means if incentive fee as of February has to be 1800, this number, then, and since we have already accrued 1000, we only accrue additional adjustment for the month of February. That is the February incentive fee accrual. Next month, we see there is a loss of 3000, reducing our cumulative profit. And hence, when we calculate the entire incentive fee for the year, it is only 1200. 6000 times 20%, which means we have to make a negative adjustments in the entire incentive fee till date because so far, how much we have been calculated? incentive fee 1800 whereas the total incentive fee should be 1200 only hence we make only monthly adjustment of 600 dollar which is negative as you can see here so 1200 compared with 1800 we have to make um, downward adjustment for incentive fee so in the month of uh, march incentive fee accrued is minus 600 subsequently in the month of April, there is a negative PL, uh, i.e., the loss of 21,000, uh, resulting into no performance fee. Hence, we reverse entire incentive fee which was left. So, so far, we had 1200 incentive fee. In the month of April, we reverse all of this because there is no incentive fee since the overall cumulative profit is negative, YTD, which is year to date. So this way we calculate month on month basis incentive fee in column F, we calculate year to date incentive fee and then calculate the adjustments which needs to be passed. So in this manner, we see that for the entire year here, the profit is 80,500, which is as of December. 20% of 80,500 is 1600, 16,100. So this is the incentive fee which is going to be charged on the fund for the entire year. And if we add all the adjustment done for the month, for the year, that is also 16,100. So that's, that's what is matching with the yearly incentive fee as well. Because when we charge monthly performance fee, it has to be equal to the entire year's incentive fee as well. So that's why I just do a double check, 16,100, which is matching with my annual performance fee on the basis of the total accumulated profit for the year. So total profit 80,500 should be 
charge for the PNL so, um, multiplied by 20% is 16,100. And that is why this ent entire monthly accrual also makes sense. So this way we can double check as well. Now the question arises, when do we crystallize? So as we discussed briefly in earlier sessions as well, the crystallization takes place on uh, either quarterly basis based on the PPM or half annual plus generally funds uh, compulsively crystallize at the end of the year and also at the time of any investors are redeeming because at time of redemption, we need to crystallize the incentive fee and pay to investment manager because if the investor leaves with that profit, who will pay later on and subsequently to the investment manager. Hence, at the time of redemption, if say overall NAV is 100 million and one of the investor uh, who owns 10%, i.e. 10 million leaves, then we have to also crystallize incentive fee in that ratio, like in, in, uh, up to 10% of the total accrual. So at the time of redemption, at the year end, and also on quarterly or semi-annual basis, we can crystallize the performance fee. However, it is critical that we uh, check the uh, PPM private placement memorandum and any other legal document to validate uh, the correct frequency and uh, process of crystallizing incentive fee as well because there could be some holdback there could be some um, uh, retention of the performance uh, fee and uh, red redemption as well so we need to check for those clauses as well now let's take an example for crystallization here in the month of january there was a negative profits and so loss of 15000 cumulative loss is 15000 here again so no incentive fee in, in the month of february there is a Profit of 10,000, so 2,000 of the incentive fee. And in the month of March, there is 30,000 profit. So cumulative profit is 40,000, which means 8,000 of the performance fee. So overall, there is a total performance fee for the year accrued here. And whenever we crystallize, whether on quarterly basis or monthly basis, we will pay to the investment manager. So it is simply, um, following the PPM and crystallization schedules. Here we have a more detailed example of uh, high watermark calculations and um, incentive fee as well. So let's take an example. Starting with year zero, there was an investment of 20 lakhs or 2 million. Out of that 2 million, we have No profit for the uh, start of the year, uh, obviously. So from next year, we have overall loss of 250K. So in year one, we have a loss of 250K, which reduces our overall now, which is 1.75 million. So excess of high water mark over now is actually negative because now has reduced, there was a loss. So it remains 1.75 million overall. Next year, when we start, obviously the NAV will start from the um, in the year two um, as per previous year's closing NAV. So again, 1.75 million. Subsequently, we made a profit in year two. So 150K is a profit for year two, which brings the NAV up. It becomes 1.9 million, as we see here. With this, if you check again how much is high watermark um, um, below NAV or what is the excess of high watermark as compared to NAV, it is still negative 100K. And let, let's simplify this. Overall, the high watermark is how much? 2 million. What is the NAV? Closing NAV? 1.9 million. Hence, 100K is the negative excess. Because until and unless NAV crosses this benchmark of high watermark, this line, until and unless the NAV crosses this high watermark, there will be no incentive fee. And that's the point uh, we are trying to make here. So in, again, in this case, that despite the fact that in year two, we have a profit, we are not able to calculate any incentive fee. There will be no incentive fee calculated because excess of high watermark over NAV is still negative. The, that means NAV has not exceeded the high watermark. Because in earlier session, we noticed that high watermark has to be exceeded by NAV 
So once the NAV goes above high watermark, only then incentive fee will be calculated and accrued, which is not the case here. Hence, incentive fee is nil again this time. So closing NAV remains as it is, uh, 1.9 million. And uh, we ca carry forward uh, a NAV next year from the year two. But before that, we need to also notice there is a redemption of 40%. So that means NAV is going to reduce by 40%. And redemption value is 7.760K, uh, which brings down the entire NAV to 1.14 million only. That's interesting because now our NAV is overall reduced. So how the high watermark will work, we have to see. So first of all, in year three, our NAV will be starting with the reduced value. So that is something to note here. Opening NAV is closing uh, NAV of last year. So opening NAV of the year three is quite a, uh, quite less because there was a redemption of 40%. Next, do we make a profit? Yes, 360K. So what is the overall NAV? 1.5 million, which is good news because we made a substantial profit here. Next, if you look at opening high water market is only 1.2 million, whereas it was 2 million earlier. Why it has gone down? Because if we see, there is a overall um, redem uh, reduction in the high water mark owing to the redemption taking place last year. Now let's simplify this. If suppose all the investor leaves one by one and the NAV goes down, Will the investment manager be able to exceed the previous high water mark? No, because, uh, because of the redemption, the capital base is eroding. Capital is going down. And uh, because of that, investment manager will not be able to exceed previously agreed high water mark. So we have to make the pro rata adjustment in the high water mark as well, so that it becomes more justified for investment manager as well as the investor to uh, agree on a high watermark. For example, we remove the redemption amount from the high watermark and only keep 60% of high watermark as the target for next year because only 60% of NAV is left. Hence, we also need to retain 60% of high watermark. Just a game of pro rata. So, from this year, high watermark is new high watermark is 1.2 million. What is the excess? 3 million. 300k actually because now went up to 1.5 million high watermark is only 1.2 million so 300k is the excess over the high watermark what is the incentive fee here please note incentive fee is 10 percent only so 30,000 is the incentive fee in this case now that will be charged to the nav here which is 1.5 million so that is reduced by the incentive fee accrued, we have only 1.47 million of NAV. Okay, that's clear because this is really the gross NAV and after we charge incentive fee, that becomes final NAV, which is net asset value. So 1.47 million. Again, this will ca get carried forward to year four, a start of year four, 1.47 million. And again, lucky year, we made 2 million, uh, 200K of profit. It becomes 1.67 million. And what is the our magic number, high watermark? That is copied from last year, 1.47, because there was no redemption. So we just copy the same high watermark to year four. Since we see the excess is 200K, because high watermark is 1.67, whereas the, uh, sorry, the NAV was 1.67 high watermark was only 1.47, hence 200K is the excess on which 10% of incentive fee is charged, becoming 20K. Adjusting 1.67 with 20K, it becomes 1.65 million. Is there any redemption this year again? Yes, there is 40%. So another 60% will be retained in NAV. So since 60% is retained in NAV, we also need to make pro rata adjustment in high watermark, keeping only 60% of prior NAV as high watermark. So 60% again, we need to uh, maintain only 
990k as a high work mark. Now, what is the opening NAV? We know closing NAV from last year. And uh, if you notice, there is a loss this year of 400k. So obviously, because of the loss, there's a negative excess, which means there is no incentive fee calculated because the NAV has not exceeded the new high water mark. Hence, no incentive fee. Fast forward again, uh, NAV remains 5.9. Uh, actually 590k only that gets carried forward over um, in next year which is year six in year six oh there seems to be some magical year there is a 12k of profit which means um uh, sorry uh, there is a 1.2 million of profit so nav reaches to 1.79 million we know high water mark is as it is from last year 990k what is the excess the difference between 1.79 million versus 9 uh, 990k there is excess of 800k which means nav has gone way beyond high water mark of 990 hence we calculate the incentive fee 10 percent on this number which is 80,000. reducing 80,000 from this number we have 1.71 million of nav left which is carried forward like next year. Again, we make a profit of 400,000. Now becomes 2.11 million. High watermark is in this case, 1.71 million. Why not 9.9 million, uh, okay? 990K? Because we have charged incentive fee on this number this time. Because now went, now went up to this point, we charged 10% on the excess nav so high watermark is always taken on the nav at which the incentive fee is charged hence incentive fee is charged at 1.71 million this time so we take the this as high watermark for the next year so 1.71 million again this year we have uh, nav has exceeded the high watermark by 400k so we calculate another incentive fee of 40000 adjusting with this number the new nav is 20 uh, 2.07 million which is again carried over next year we make a profit and high water mark is carried over from previous year this way we have completed the entire eight year cycle of how to calculate incentive fee using hurdle rate and high water mark and we we have learned that high water mark is adjusted Whenever there is a redemption, high watermark is carried over from previous year if that was the highest nav on which the incentive fee was paid. So high watermark is always based on the highest nav on which the incentive fee has been paid last. So these are a couple of points to uh, keep in mind. And using this, we can uh, calculate high watermark uh, hurdle rate incentive fee easily. Hope uh, you find this video useful and uh, we'll meet you again in the next session. Thank you so much for your time.